So in the two sample t test, the question that we are going to ask is, I am going to take two different samples, right? I am going to take two different samples and I want to know if both of these samples came from the same distribution or not. And I have some underlying distribution from which I have drawn two samples. I want to know if both of these samples came from the same distribution or not, right? So it could be the distribution of errors, right? So I could actually draw two samples. I can say I am going to run algorithm 1, okay, I am going to get this many errors like 10, I am going to run algorithm 1 on uh, 10 different uh, times, right? So does it remind you of something? You could think of something like tenfold cross validation, right? I, I run algorithm 1 on uh, using tenfold cross validation, I get 10 different numbers, right? I run algorithm 2 using tenfold cross validation, I get 10 different numbers, right? Now, what does what do I mean by the question? Do they come from the same distribution? That means that if I run this algorithm one again and again and again and again and again, I am going to see some distribution over the errors, right? If I run algorithm two again and again and again, I am going to see some distribution over the errors, right? Or these two distributions the same, right? So the question I am asking is: I have algorithm one, I have algorithm two, or the errors similarly distributed? That means there is no statistical difference between algorithm 1 and algorithm 2 okay so that's what we that's the kind of questions that we would like to ask right so a two sample test uh, t test allows us to do that compare means of two samples to see if they are drawn from the same population or different right and again remember when you're talking about same population or different we are only asking the question are there mean same or different the assumption we are making is the standard deviation are all same okay So the null hypothesis is yes, they are drawn from the same distribution. So mu1 is equal to mu2, right? And the alternate hypothesis is well for a change. Okay, let's do a two-tailed test. So this is called two-tailed because I'm going to look at both ends of the distribution, right? So the greater than or less than were called one-tailed or single-tailed because we are looking only at one end of the distribution. Okay. So what I am really want now is to look at the look at that right. I want to look at x1 bar minus x2 bar and what it should be 0 if it is a null hypothesis is true, right. So, I am going to have I will compare it with a 0 mean Gaussian or a 0 mean uh, yeah, so 0 mean t distribution, right. So, with some number of degrees of freedom, but I need to really compute the t statistics, right. So, the t statistic looks something like this in this case. So, I am going to look at, so this is 0 mean, right? So, x1 minus x2 minus 0, right, uh, divided by the, the variance. So, how, how will I compute the variance? So, the variance of the difference is actually the sum of the individual variances, okay. intuitively that makes sense, right. right. So, here is the, we do, we'll do something, I mean, these are these are details, okay, there are nothing to get hung up about, right. So, I basically have to estimate this variance, right. How will I do this variance? I can do one of two things, I can take the 
samples I have drawn right are under algorithm 1 I can estimate x1 uh, sigma, uh, sigma squared x1 bar I can take look at the samples I drew under algorithm 2 and I can estimate sigma square s2 bar right. So, I can do this independently and I can get this variance and then what I do? Right, I can I can plug this in here and I can get away with it, right? But the problem is, uh, not not really a problem. There's a small uh, advantage that I can take here. What is the advantage? What, what is it? What is it? I can do? Huh? I'm assuming that the variances are equal, right? So what did we do earlier when we had a situation where we had this thing and we assumed the variances are equal? People remember that? We did something called a pooled estimate. Right. So, in the pooled estimate what you do is you essentially look at the variance across the entire population right, and you compute the variance. So, you can actually do a pooled estimate right. right. So, my sigma hat So, on how many degrees of freedom this is going to have? So, this essentially I will I'll, I'll plug this in here, right? I will plug this in here and I will compute my t statistics, right? Once I computed the t statistics, right, I, like I said, these are all details, right? If you understood everything so, so here so far till here, everything is fine. Here we are just computing the variance, this just looks little complex, but there is nothing but just computing the sample variance by using a pool of estimates, right. So, now how many degrees of freedom I am going to have here? We talked about it last time also. N1 plus N2 minus, N1 plus N2 minus 2, right? That is N1, N1 minus 1, N2 minus 1. So, it is N1 plus N2 minus 2. So, the number of degrees of freedom is N1 plus. So, you take this T statistics, look up that table and figure out for whatever P level you want, right? So, that is basically it. So, this is called the two sample T test and it is very useful when you want to. Uh, compare performance of two different algorithms on some sample that has been drawn, right. You remember the example I told you, right. In fact, the nice thing about the two sample t test is I do not really need to do tenfold cross validation on both algorithms. Let us say one algorithm is significantly more expensive to run than the other. So, I can do a fivefold cross validation on one and a tenfold cross validation on the other because I am not expecting the n1 and n2 to be the same here, right. But the variance is going to be higher, right? If you think about it, so the variance will be higher if the samples are very different, right? Because the, the, the n1 samples I run on the algorithm 1, right? And the n2 samples on which I run algorithm 2, if they are different sets of samples, then if I, if I look at the pooled estimate of the variance, the variance will be higher, right? Because there will be some underlying variance because of the change in the samples itself. If I run the same algorithm again and again on the same on different samples, I am going to get variance. I am running different algorithms on different samples, so the variance will be larger. So, what will that mean? So, naturally, my t statistics will become smaller, right. So, the larger the t, the more my p value can be, right. So, if the t statistics might become smaller if the variance is larger. So, is there some way I can get rid of at least some of this variance? Right, so, we do something called a
So, paired sample t test. So, what does this mean? So, I am going to run algorithm 1 and algorithm 2 on the same sample, right. So, if I am going to take 10 different samples, I will run both algorithm 1 and algorithm 2 on the same set of 10 samples, right, instead of running them on different samples, right. Ideally, if you have the control over how the sampling is done and how the experiments are done, then you should run paired sample tests, okay. The two sample tests is appropriate only when somebody gives you the performance on different samples a priori, right. They do not allow you to sample and run the algorithm. Somebody says, okay, I have my, uh, I have the, I have access to some 15 samples, I have run my algorithm on it, here are the 15 performances and you can do whatever you want on the, on samples that you draw. I will not tell you what the samples I drew is, okay. Then you can run uh, your algorithm on 10 different samples that you draw from the same data and then you can compare the two. Then you do two sample t tests. But if you have complete control over what you are doing, then you do pad t test, right, pad sample t test. And so essentially what does this mean? It means the following, right. Suppose I am doing 10 fold cross validation. So what do I do? I create these 10 folds, right. People know what the folds are, right. So I am dividing them, I will do some stratified uh, sampling or whatever it is. I create these 10 folds, I keep them, I write them onto disk. So, whenever I run an algorithm, I am just going to read the folds from the disk and run it. I am not going to regenerate the folds every time I run the algorithm. So, that would mean that for every fold, I will have results from both algorithms. Okay. So, in fact, this is catching on so much in the machine learning community now that uh, for uh, many of the newer data sets that are being published, okay, uh, people are actually publishing the folds on which they ran the experiments. So that you can also run the run them on the same folds. So so you don't you don't generate your new folds and start running because then the comparison becomes little iffy, right? You can use the same folds that they ran the experiments on. Therefore, you don't have to repeat their numbers. I can directly compare it with their numbers and I can report. Right? So that's that's why people are actually publishing the folds also. Right? So when you do pair sample t test, what you are doing is here. What are you doing here? You are taking the mean of x1 and the mean of x2 and comparing it against 0, right. In this case what you can do, I can take the difference because I am running it on the same sample, right. So, I can actually the difference of the performance now makes sense on one sample. So, here instead of averaging the samples and taking the difference, I can first take the difference, okay, and then compare it to a 0 mean distribution, right. So, instead of, instead of having a lot of x's and then getting x1 bar, I am going to have lot of x's, lot of x2's and then I will get have a lot of x1 minus x2's and then I will take a x1 minus x2 the whole bar, okay and then compare it to a 0 mean distribution. So, that is what I do in pad sample test and uh, so this is going to have n minus 1 It is going to have n minus 1 degrees of freedom, right. My h naught is right. So, what is this mu? This is the difference of the means, uh, I mean, sorry, difference of the performance, right. So, that is 0, right. The mean of the difference of the performance is 0 across many, many samples. That means they are the same. That is my null hypothesis, right. And uh, Right. Or I can do mu greater than zero, which case, which case depends on which one I'm subtracting. If it's x1 minus x2, if we say mu greater than zero, that means x1 is better than x2. But there should be some something from the data that supports your alternate hypothesis. Right. So, this is basically the standard stuff, right. So, you do this and uh, well if you mu is 0, then this is 0, this is just x bar by sigma hat, sigma hat is the sample standard deviation by root n, right and you have n minus. So, this is actually a lot lower variance because you do not have any 
problem generated variance you only have the variance due to the performance of the algorithm right the the samples themselves are exactly the same so that gives you a, a much higher t estimate than you would get if you run the two sample t tests okay so i've explained all what all of these things do but almost all packages that you can use right have all of this built in so you can do t tests the z test whatever it is you want you can run you don't really have to worry about the internals of it right you just need to specify the hmm? sorry the p level you just need to specify the p level yeah. what is it saying what test to use yeah apart from that i mean for a given <laughs> test you have to specify what is the p level right what is the p level that you are looking for so if you say i want a p level of 0.001 at least right then some of these could actually reject it saying that no i cannot reject the null hypothesis at a level of 0.001 or something so it could come back and tell you what they